Hi there. In this video, you are going to learn the five steps to perfect keying or chroma keying or removing green screen if you like or blue screen. Now we're going to take this uh, video with this handsome guy and remove the green here and remove everything else and uh, put a new background, this kind of background here. Okay, and of course we are going to do color correction. So the subject merges with the background and it's like he is in the room. The first thing you want to do, that's not your first step, but the first thing you want to do is to add a mask to define exactly the area that you want to have after the green screen. In this case here, I selected the ellipse and it's quite cool to have the mask as an ellipse. So I will create the ellipse like this and press shift, I have a circle, press space bar and just move it over here. Something like this will do. Now I need to adjust the mask, of course. I will go for the pen tool, click over here and here and make it much bigger, something like this. I don't like it very near the hair. I'm gonna take it up here. So now you make sure that your subject is inside the mask. It's not coming out. If the subject is moving left and right, then you can animate the mask or do some tracking. But for this, we are quite cool for that. Now your experience to keying will start. You select your layer, you go to effects and preset, and there is a key, that's what you look for. There is an effect here that has three effects inside it. You just click on it and drag it on the layer. And you will notice that you have three effects here. The key light effect is really the one that will remove the green. You have a key cleaner and advanced spill suppressor. I always start by putting off this Mr. Key Cleaner because it can cause some problems in the beginning. So let's open the key light here. And your first step, now we're starting, is to find the best screen color, that's the green that you want to remove. Now, how do you do that? Well, usually what I do, I go and open the footage itself. So I have now the footage over here. Come back to the composition and go back to the FX and select the color picker here. I will click and then I come to the footage here. Now I want to sample certain greens here to get the best result possible. The way to do that is simply you point and press option. It did not pick and set the green yet. It's just showing you a sample of how it would be. If you don't like this one, you press option again, you point on the green and press option, you have another green. So let me do an example here. If I press option here, you notice now I have a gray color. So I'm going to go back to this green here, press option and I have this green here. Rule of thumb, I always take the darkest green possible and that will be fine. Since I sampled several colors, that's very fine, but I did not select. Notice it's not selected. So you have to go back here and click on the color. So now when this is not highlighted, it means it has picked the color and you can close your footage. This seems extraordinarily well. Well, it is not. And for you to have a look, just have a look of what's going wrong in the background here. I can see some green is to add a new solid layer that is pure white. So I'm going to go for pure white here. Put it under the layer. And now you can see that there are some green in the background here. Second step is to create a perfect mat. To do that, you can play with the screen gain and then you play around with the screen mat. Since I can see these very clearly and I will play with the screen gain. Of course, I'm gonna take it up so I don't see any green around here or any granulation if you like. So I'm at 110. Come back here and start pointing. You notice we have something quite good. Okay, there is no color at all now and it's pretty cool, but we still have certain problems, you know, certain green. After that, I'm going to put this to 110. I think it's better. Yes. After that, you move in now to your screen mat and you open the screen mat just over here. So what you want to do is to work with the clip black and clip white to start with to have a perfect white and a perfect black, which we already have if you notice. What you do is to start clipping your blacks and you're looking carefully at your mat. So now notice I went overboard here. What are these grains here with some gray inside? It means this is not fully opaque. It has some transparency on the hair and on the border. 
So 98 is too high. Let's take it down. I can take it up to, let's say, 50. Okay. Then I go back to clip white and try my white to be very sharp. I think I'm getting good result here. I will reduce the clip black. So actually, it's very easy in this step where you're trying to get a perfect mat where the white is 100% white and there is no black around. Now, if I point all around, I'm not finding any black. I'm looking over here for the RGB. Let's get out of the screen mat now. You come back to intermediate results. And uh, we are going to delete this layer. Before you start doing an adjustment, you are better off adding your background because you are going to do the adjustment according to what's showing in the background. If this disturbs you, for example, you can put it off and look over here. Okay, I have some green here. But I'm going to put the background. Come back to the effect itself. Select the layer. And now I am in the key cleaner. So let me put off the background to show you. If I put on the key cleaner, notice at the borders here. I'm going to zoom in. So this is off key cleaner. This is on. Sometimes this is very useful if you remove the green, of course, and you add the advanced spill suppressor. So notice this is quite nice sometimes to have this kind of, you know, semi-transparent here. But in our case, I don't think this is good. Actually, this is better. You can put it on and put it to two. That's cool. And remove the chatter. That's very cool over here. Now, if you look over, I have here something that might not be looking very well. So actually, it's a kind of trial and error now. This is your third step, I think, the key cleaner here. You can put off the key cleaner and decide what you want. You notice now it's sharp and the suppression is working fine over here on the head. The hair is always important if you don't put a light, a, let's say the hair light. It means it's a light that you put on top so the green does not spill into the hair and usually it spills a lot. Now this is your decision here if you want to have this or not. I will go for the not. I like it very much. The spilled Suppressor, if you notice, I just used standard. You can go to ultra and play around. But let me tell you, if you are doing simple stories, you know, not very complicated. The lighting was okay. Actually, I used here natural light. I don't have any light, just natural. I think this is looking perfect. But now when I put the background on, I will look carefully. I'm okay with the borders and so on. I still have a kind of border here, if you notice. Uh, there is some kind of border here. To remove that border, you have here the screen shrink or glow. So you can add minus 1 to shrink it. Not minus 10, <laughs> minus 0 0.5, right? No, minus 1 will do well. Now, you don't want to have minus 5 because most probably, most of the time, you will eat the ears. <laughs> okay, the ears will disappear. So this is very good in terms of green screen. But if you notice very well, the guy or the subject doesn't seem to be in the room. There's quite a difference in coloring between the background and uh, the subject itself. The major problem here, you have the light coming from the right. So it's coming over here. But this guy has shadow over here. That's not practical at all. And he has the lights over here. Now, there are several ways to work on this and make it, you know, superb and so on. But... There is something I always do and rarely somebody will notice is to flip the subject. Yes, you might laugh about it, but actually look at it carefully. Now it looks more natural. It is within the light and we have light on his side here. You can do that all the time almost, provided that he's not holding something, he's not writing with his left hand now. It looks a bit awkward. You could also flip the background. In our case, it's not possible because we have numbers and a clock here. It might look like it's reversed. In this case, if you look at it again, it's looking pretty fine. The guy is fine and there are several ways to blend him within the background. The first thing I like doing is to add a new solid layer, as simple as this, and pick a color. For example, I'm going to go for this color here. So I'm picking a color from the background, and I want, the, you know, it merges with this guy. So I put OK. Now, of course, I'm going to open the transparency or the opacity and take it down, you know, maybe 5%, 6%. 
6%. Yes, that looks good. But remember, you have a mask here. Do you remember that? So I'm going to open the mask. And you have the mask here. You can use the same mask and drop it on the solid layer. Here you are. And then, of course, this is not good because you will have a border. You will come to the mask itself on the solid layer. And this is really a professional trick. And you go ahead and feather the mask. Not too much. Don't go, you know, crazy figures because it affects the guy or the subject. Here you are. And I click out. I don't want to see any border. I don't think I'm seeing any border, but I'm happy for that. Cool. The masks don't have to be identical, by the way. I can simply come to the mask here and take this point. Here you are. And lift it up, maybe. Okay. So now it looks quite cool. If I remove my layer, put it back, it looks quite cool. It worked. It's not bad at all. You can use this trick most of the time, which I do. But then maybe you do some color correction. In the effect here, you can add another effect, which is the Lumetri colors. Now you're trying to get some professional color corrections, somehow professional. The first thing I like doing, and this is my taste, is to try it out. I'm going to do some color correction, and it seems good. So that's before, that's after. I like it. It took a bit uh, the exposure, took the shadows down, it took the white down, it took the blacks down, <laughs> everything down. But then I need to add some temperature here. Before you go to curves, color wheels, and so on, try these simple ones here. Not the tint, of course, but between temperature and saturation, you might get some results. I'm going to hike the temperature. Of course, it's going to go towards reddish. So here you are. What am I looking at? I'm looking at the shirt more than the face. So maybe I exaggerated here, but I like it. Okay, I'm going to go down. Let's go around 60, I noticed. Yep something like this let's click out and see exactly does it work now if you solo the layer and complicate your life you will notice that it's looking abnormal not so abnormal but too red but within the background is looking very well very good in fact i'm gonna take it to 40 40 will do better let's add some blur to the background so i'll select the blur here and i will take the gaussian blur and drop it on the background itself and you can hike it and make it terrible, okay? <laughs> or put a little blur, okay? Imagine you have not a very sophisticated camera. So the focus is on the subject and there is a little blur. Notice in our case, we really didn't need it, but it's always nice to add some blur to the background to make a difference. This is without the blur and this is with the blur. I like it a bit with the blur. I'm going to put it at five and finalize the work. Thank you guys for listening. Give me some thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel because I will always give you some practical videos for video effect. Thanks guys for listening. Please subscribe. Give me some thumbs up. And I promise you to give you the best video for motion graphics, visual effects, and video editing that are coming very soon. And enjoy. Bye. I don't know what to say anymore. Bye-bye.